Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Good Shepherd Youth, check out our Youth Ministry Moment. Tune in every fourth Sunday for a time of empowerment and encouragement. This virtual ministry moment will be available on all of our usual platforms. Youth Ministry Moment, every fourth Sunday at 11.30 a.m. For all children four years old to fifth grade, join our virtual children's ministry, The Zone, every first Thursday at 6 p.m. For the Zoom links, email Pastor Angel White at awhite at goodshepherdbaptist.org. The Zone, virtual children's ministry. All GSBC parents and guardians are invited to our parents' meeting on Thursday, March 11th at 7 p.m., hosted by our youth ministry. This is a rescheduled date from February 18th. This meeting is created just for you. Our special guests will be Dr. Margie Smith and Deacon Erica Stewart. This meeting will focus on self-care and effective parenting in a defective world. To participate and receive the Zoom link and reminders, email Pastor Angel White at awhite at goodshepherdbaptist.org. That's our parent meeting, hosted by the Youth Ministry, Thursday, March 11th at 7 p.m. God bless you all tonight. Thank God that we're able to come together uh, on another Wednesday night. I want you to... Uh, uh, permit me to uh, share this Wednesday night message from my office instead of from the sanctuary. Um, the, this, the day is quite busy, and um, um, I need to go and serve some families here in just a moment. So uh, I'm doing it from the office um, because it's a bit more convenient. It doesn't really matter where I do it from. The word is the word. So thank you so much um, for tuning in. Let's bow our heads together and pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for our time together tonight. Moreover, Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that it has power to change and alter our lives until we reflect your glory in the earth. So speak to us tonight, O oh God, we pray. Help us to understand better our purpose in this world to help us to discover those things that are pleasing to you. And then Lord, give us the strength to put forth the effort that is necessary that we might do those things um, to the glory and honor of your name. Again, Lord, I thank you for everyone who is tuning in tonight, uh, who is joining us in this virtual community, this virtual worship service. Lord, bless them right where they are is my prayer. Lord, anoint me afresh. Give me an ear to hear your voice. Lord, give me the courage and wisdom to speak it and say it as you would. Lord, give me passion of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that I might proclaim your word with joy. I ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, we're talking um, <clears throat> on Wednesdays. And this is going to be the last installment, by the way, uh, on Finding Purpose. And uh, I wanted to uh, conclude uh, this uh, little sermonic series um, by looking into the life of Christ. I want you to turn with me 
in your Bibles to um, the Gospel of John chapter 2. And there you will find recorded um, the first miracle that Jesus performed at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. You remember the story, the Bible says there in John chapter 2, that uh, Jesus um, was invited along with his mother and his, and the, the, excuse me, the disciples um, to um, a, a community celebration, a wedding feast. Uh, we know historically <clears throat> in those times that those celebrations lasted for several days. It was a very major event. It marked a significant moment in the life of the couple um, that uh, had become married. And, um, and so everybody, the whole community, family, friends, uh, were invited to the celebration. Um, as fate would have it, um, during the, this particular celebration, um, the Bible says the wine had run out. Um, uh, wine was a, a staple of beverage in those days. And, um, uh, but uh, uh, in, in that society, um, to have the wine run out, especially during the celebration, um, would have been a moment of embarrassment um, for um, the couple uh, and their families. And the, the sensitivity of Jesus' mother uh, caused her to impose upon her son um, to somehow, supernaturally, as it were, um, correct um, the situation and to save the couple and their family from embarrassment. And there was a, a brief hesitation, of course, on the part of Christ, but then he concedes the wishes of his mother and he uh, turns, as the scripture says, the water into wine. Um, now this is, this is a very simple as a, uh, uh, thing for Jesus to be able to do. As we look back now, we can see that Christ demonstrated and wielded uh, power to handle situations that were much more complex than this. Um, and I say that to say that this is something that Christ could have handled alone. He could have single-handedly um, turned the water into wine. But that's not the way uh, Jesus uh, chose to act. And I think this is, this is significant because, again, this is the first miracle that Jesus uh, performed that is recorded. And it's important that we pay attention to what Christ did, the manner in which he did it. Um, we need to look at, again, exactly how um, Jesus performed this miracle because I believe uh, in couched within it are some helpful hints uh, for you and I. Again, this is about finding purpose. And, um, and let me just say this too. Uh, even though we're talking about finding purpose, sometimes your purpose will find you. Um, I know we're looking for this, uh, I don't know, this... Uh, this overwhelmingly significant moment, this uh, moment when the light bulb goes off, when, when everything confusing becomes clear. Um, but sometimes um, finding purpose or discovering purpose does not happen in that way. May I suggest to you that finding and discovering the purpose of God many times happens in the ordinary moments of life. Um, as in the case of this text. Um, and um, sometimes purpose will find you. I, I say all the time that, um, that I, I'd ha I, when the Lord called me into ministry, when I knew clearly that the Lord was calling me to preach, um, I could understand that. Um, but in the mind of a 12 year old, um, didn't know what to do with it. And so I remember hearing other ministers in church talking about their call and, uh, and and making a reference, you know, of warning the Lord to call them by their name. And uh, and I said that, and, you know, just to myself, I said, Lord, I ain't going until you call me by my name. <laughs> and, uh, 
And uh, that's the way I wanted it to happen. I wanted some significant explosive moment other than this thought in my mind um, um, of God's voice uh, asking me or bidding me um, to preach his word. And uh, uh, it never happened. That's the point I'm trying to make. It never happened. The Lord never called me by my name. Um, because sometimes, again, a purpose in ministry will just find you in the ordinary moments of life. And so while you're looking for something uh, strangely significant and spectacular to occur in your life before you get started, you may miss out on a moment, amen, to, to minister to others, amen, to find and discover your purpose in the ordinary moments of life. So as we look at how Jesus handled um, this situation, the Bible says, again, uh, there in John chapter 2, that after Christ concedes um, to the wishes of his mother, um, the Bible says that there was nearby. Again, just nearby. Um, he didn't go and ask for six stone water pots. He didn't ask, bring me some servants. They, they were nearby. Jesus used what was nearby. And I want you to, I want you to hear that. Again, it's about finding purpose in the ordinary moments of life. Amen. It's about understanding, amen, that what you need to make a difference is nearby. Amen. Why are you, you saying I ain't got the money? You're saying that I don't have um, uh, other resources and, uh, available that, that in order to make a difference, uh, you have in your mind to have to do certain things a certain way. And um, if the if the implements um, that you deem necessary are not available, you make their uh, unavailability your excuse for not doing the will of God. I'm telling you, you got to use what's nearby. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. I said, you've got to use what's nearby. Amen. What was nearby was six water pots and the servants. Um, uh, the Bible says um, that Jesus uh, told the servants to fill the water pots uh, with water, and they did exactly what Jesus said. I want to suggest to you that if you're going to do the will of God, um, you're going to have to learn how to submit to the master. Um, you're going to learn how to submit to the master. Now, it's interesting now, um, the, the identity of Christ, other than his relationship, uh, first of all, to his mother and the relationship that he was forging uh, with the disciples who were present, um, outside of that context, Jesus was not known. He was not known then as the Messiah. This is, a, this is the beginning of his ministry. Um, uh, in fact, the ministry is, team is being formulated. The foundation is being laid. And so still very early on. And so it is safe to assume um, that from a spiritual standpoint, the servants did not really know who Jesus was and to know him as master. Um, but, but what I want you to understand is that these uh, men who followed the request of Christ, they were servants. They were, they, they, they were servants, uh, probably hired um, by the hosts um, who uh, prepared um, for um, the marriage celebration, for the wedding feast. They own the clock. They are servants. And I want you to understand this now. Uh, another little sidebar that if, if, you, if you are a servant of the Lord, excuse me, you, you're always on the clock. Amen. You don't have to know everything about everything, but, but, you are, but because you are a servant, it is still incumbent upon you to serve. And the way that we serve consistently um, in, in a manner that is fluid, is to always be submitted to the master. The, excuse me, this submission of the master was such um, that despite the abnormality of the request, um, there was still the absence of refusal. Despite the abnormality of the request, there was still the absence of refusal. All right, what am I saying? I'm saying the servants didn't suck their teeth and roll their eyes and look at Jesus and say, didn't you hear your mama just say, that there was no wine. Why are you asking us to fill the water pots with water? Amen. And I know that we have a, a natural tendency to question things that we don't understand. And um, 
And I want to say to all of us that there, there is this certain dynamic, amen, that must be, be brought to bear, and that is one of submission, whether you understand it or not. And I know that's hard to do. We, we, are, we are prone, we are, we are programmed to question everything, and all of us have questions. And, um, but I got to tell you that in order um, for the assignment to be completed, Sometimes we have to uh, 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 we have to refrain from refusing the request simply because we don't understand it. If you're a servant, a true servant will say, "Well, I don't, I don't get it," uh, but but that's not my job. That's not my job to get it. My job is to do it, to do what I'm being asked to do. All right. So so again, it's got to be a submission to the master, and 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 really, it's a simple thing. Even though that Jesus' mother said there's no wine. Jesus tells the servants to fill the water pots with water. Um, uh, again, it's real strange. It, it seems, excuse the phone, it seems to be uh, out of context. But the servants comply. Why do they comply? They comply because it's a simple request. It may be confusing. It may appear, It may be a bit abnormal under these circumstances. Amen. But it's but it's within the scope of their ability. Sometimes the Lord will ask you to do something that you may not understand, but it is something for which you have capability. You have got to do what the Lord says. Amen. Because you can do it. And number two, because he said do it. Uh, the second thing I want to suggest to you is that um, that these servants that Jesus used, remember now he could have performed this miracle by himself. But he employs um, the service of the servants in doing so. And the Bible refers to them as servants. They didn't call them out by name. We know that there were at least six servants because there was at least six water pots. Uh, so we infer that. Um, and um, each one filling um, a, a water pot full of water. Um, and we never hear their name. We don't we don't hear anything about the items that are listed on their resume. Amen. Listen, they serve without mention. They serve without being mentioned in any individual or a particular way. Amen. Listen, and I want you to write this down. Here's the second point of my of my message. Their collective involvement removed the need for individual credit. Their collective involvement relieved the need of individual credit. Amen. Sometimes your purpose is going to be carried out alongside others. Amen. And we, we think of, because remember I told you before early in this sermon series that we think of purpose being my purpose. Sometimes it's our purpose. Sometimes it's y'all purpose. Amen. But really, in, in, in fact, it is the purpose of God. Amen. And God enlists individuals um, to operate uh, collectively and cooperatively. Amen. And and he requires that we do so without receiving any individual or, in, or in individualized credit. Amen. I'm telling you, now, if you want the credit, if you want somebody to, you know, hold you up high, and that's going to be, you know, a, a determining factor as to whether or not you're going to serve, you may not ever serve. Amen. And if you do, your intentions and your motivations may be called into question. We are called, child of God, listen to me, amen, to, to involve ourselves collectively with others. Amen. They, all six are working. Amen. And, fill, and, and they're not doing much. They're just simply filling the water pots with water, fill it up to the brim, right up to the top. Amen. Then the second assignment they have is to dip out from what's in the water pot. Amen. Dip the water out, and when the water was dipped out, and the and the uh, uh, the head of the celebration, or I should say, the host, tasted it, uh, he he couldn't believe it because it was wine. It was it was better tasting wine than the wine that they had been drinking. Amen. And it had been supernaturally provided by Christ, but in doing so, he used, amen. Let me say, let me say this also. Um, 
uh, when you serve God, I'm talking about serving God to find a purpose. Something when you serve God, when you when you sign on to be a servant of God, you don't know what the Lord may ask you to do at any time. Amen. Who they they might when they when they took the assignment, I promise you they didn't think they were going to have to fill the water pots with water trying to get somewhere. I pro, that, that was not on. That, you know we're gonna serve the food and or serve the wine or whatever. But 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 to have this kind of aberration and interruption in the process, Amen. Uh, one that, uh, that 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 calls for, Amen. Uh, Christ's intervention and, and creativity, Amen. Their cooperation. I promise you, they didn't they didn't bank on that. But they're a servant, Amen. They're a servant, and and uh, and, uh, and and let me let me tell you about this. What, what happens is, is that because they were there, because they were obedient, because they were submitted to the master, Amen. Because they there was this absence of absence of refusal, Amen. Because they were collectively involved. They got an opportunity to witness the power of God. Are you hearing me tonight? I said they got an opportunity to witness the power of God in Christ Jesus. They had a front row seat. Praise the Lord. I said they had a front row seat. Amen. To Listen, that first miracle, that first indication, that first demonstration of what Christ was capable of doing. They had a front row seat because they were a serve. They were servants who were willing to serve, and they discovered, as it were, they found, Amen, uh, a sense of purpose in that moment, Amen. They were able. My point is, they were able to share in the miracle. They submitted to the master. They served without mention. They shared in the miracle, Amen. They, despite. The abnormality of the request, there was this refusal of absence. Their collective involvement removed the need for individual credit. But sometimes, children, you got to get personal satisfaction out of participating in something, amen, that, that benefits another. Sometimes you just you have to get simple satisfaction over the fact that, you know what, I had a role to play. Amen. I had a purpose to fulfill. And I didn't personally get the benefit. Amen. It benefited others. It didn't benefit me. Amen. Amen. I feel the water pot full of water, but I never got to taste the wine that came out of it. But somebody else did. Sometimes, children, amen, you have to realize that your act of obedience, and I, I, this, this is what I want to drive home, really. That finding purpose is really about moment by moment. Acting in obedience to what you know to be the known will of God. Amen. I, I know you want this. Sometimes you want this big plan. Amen. But sometimes purpose is realized step by step, day by day, moment by moment, as you respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit to the voice of God. And you got to realize that, listen, this is critical because your act of obedience, as we learn in the text, will contribute to the outcome. Your act, your simple act of obedience will contribute to the overall outcome. Amen. This is this is incredibly important. Amen. Now, mind you now, Jesus could have done this by himself. He don't need you and me to get this done, but he wants to use us. And why does he use? Because we're nearby. Amen. We were available. Amen. We were there at the ready. Amen. It, and uh, if Jesus were, the, the way they fill the water pots, they, they didn't do it supernaturally, they did it naturally. They filled it the way they normally fill the water pots. For Jesus to do it in that way, uh, and, and really, and I believe he wanted it done that way so that everybody could see it was water going in, water. So they won't say he done nothing, you know, sneaky. You see water going in, but wine comes out. Now, if Jesus had to fill the six. What a pot, it would take him longer. You got servants nearby. Amen. What's available? What's in your hands? What's at your disposal? What's around you? And utilize what you have. Amen. Listen to the voice of God. Move moment by moment. Amen. Act in obedience. Amen. Contribute to the overall outcome. Excuse me. 
And um, the Bible says at the end that this really jumped, this miracle, Jesus performing this miracle, it jump started his ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It you can you can as a servant of God, you have to you have to view miracles um, as as a as a way of um, um, achieving something else. Miracles are never the goal. They're only the way. Amen. God is calling us to move from miracles to ministry. Amen. In this sense, to, to not only want something done for you, but Lord, use me so that I can help do something that will benefit others. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Listen, listen, just do your part. Do what, do what you can do. Amen. Um, be faithful. Be available. Amen. Be obedient. Just do what the Lord says. Do your best not to question it. Certainly don't refuse it. Don't be stubborn against it. Yield to it. Amen. God make us going to use you for something that is bigger than yourself. Amen. Can you imagine a sigh of relief when wine came out of the pot? Amen. Can you imagine this family been saved, being saved from embarrassment. Amen. Can you imagine these servants having a front row seat, witnessing the miracle working power of the Lord? Amen. I encourage you to receive um, this final installment tonight in the way that I have brought it. Receive it uh, and understand. And all God is calling for us to do is to just do our part. He got the rest. Amen. If you trust God, amen, you take the Lord at his word. Amen. You do whatever the Lord asks you to do in the moment. Even, even the things that you don't quite understand, if you are convinced that this is, the, this is the direction in which the Lord has taken you, you go ahead. Amen. And I'm telling you, God's going to give you a front row seat. God, I feel the Holy Spirit. A front row seat, up close and personal. And you'll be able to tell others and have a testimony that says, um, you can't make me doubt the Lord. I know too much about him. I have had firsthand experience, amen, with the Lord and his power. Let's bow our heads tonight. I'm going to let you go early because I've got to go too and uh, take care of some things. So let's pray. Please receive this word tonight and be blessed. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for our time together tonight. We pray and ask God <clears throat> that you'll help us to discover our purpose, or, the, or your purpose, I should say, and help us, Lord, to participate in it as we just yield to your voice and your will, moment by moment, day by day, walking in obedience, being willing to serve without being mentioned, to, to never having a need to be identified in an individualized way, but just to work cooperatively, collectively, even sometimes silently behind the scenes in anonymity so that you can get all the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we, we want to we wanna move in life in such a way that it jumpstarts your ministry. You want to promote and further, as it were, the kingdom of God. We don't want to set up our own kingdom. Lord, we want to work and serve unto the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God in Christ. Bless your people tonight, O oh God, as we receive this word with joy and we realize we got this. It ain't nothing but filling up some water pots with water. We got this. And what you are asking of us is within the scope of our abilities. Lord, we got this. All we have to do is yield to your voice and will. And we thank you, Lord, that your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. You won't put more on us than we can bear. You'll show us what to do. You'll give us the power to get it done. And then we watch you go to work. We are co-laborers with Christ. And we thank you for that opportunity. Blessings and peace, Lord, be upon your people now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 
All right, guys, God bless you. You have a tremendous uh, evening, and we'll see you real soon.